Hey med geekers. So last week we left off on talking about the withdrawal symptoms of alcohol, which is what I want to talk about today. Now, serious signs of alcohol withdrawal usually don't happen in the average Joe that comes into the ED with alcohol intoxication. You need to watch out for this with people that have alcohol use disorder. Approximately half of the patients that have this disorder will go through withdrawal symptoms when they reduce or stop drinking, so you must monitor these patients very closely. Now, the symptoms of withdrawal can usually happen between 6 to 24 hours since the last drink the patient has taken, or a sudden reduction in the amount of alcohol in a chronic alcohol abuser, and these symptoms can include anxiety, agitation, restlessness, insomnia, tremor, diaphoresis, palpitations, and headache. And what does that sound like to you? Yes, a hangover. Alcohol is a depressant at high levels, so when your body is withdrawing from this, you will see the opposite of these downer-like effects. Hence the anxiety and the insomnia, the tremor that you may get when you're hungover, the sweating, and the palpitations. Now, the symptoms of moderate to severe alcohol withdrawal are a little different. Even though the symptoms of alcohol withdrawal are usually mild, up to 20% of patients go through severe symptoms of seizures, alcohol hallucinosis, or delirium tremens. Withdrawal seizures are usually a generalized tonic-clonic type of seizure, and usually these seizures will occur between 6 to 48 hours since the patient has had their last drink. And if they have already had one seizure, the risk for recurrence is very high. A third of these patients that have these seizures will develop into delirium tremors if they are not treated. When it comes to alcohol hallucinosis, this usually develops between 12 to 48 hours since the patient has had their last drink. Now, obviously, alcohol hallucinosis involves hallucinations. So how do you tell the difference between a drunk, psychotic individual that's actively hallucinating and a person that is withdrawing from alcohol who is having alcohol hallucinosis? Well, obviously, the past medical history will help you. But if this is the first time seeing the patient, it can be difficult to differentiate. The one difference is that in alcohol hallucinations, the hallucinations tend to be visual in nature. Particularly, they may be seeing insects or animals in the room, or the insects may be crawling all over them. Auditory manifestations are rarely seen with alcohol withdrawal versus psychotic episodes. Psychotic episodes tend to be more auditory and less commonly visual. And when it comes to their visual manifestations, they are more than just bugs crawling on them. Alcohol hallucinosis is commonly confused with delirium tremens. Yes, you can have hallucinations and delirium tremens, but alcohol hallucinosis can occur independently from the DTs. And with this, the patient will have no vital sign changes and no clouded sensorium, just the hallucinations. Delirium tremens is a symptom of alcohol withdrawal that typically takes days to develop, typically 72 to 96 hours after the patient has had their last drink. And with this, you must be careful with patients who you've been treating for withdrawal for one or two days and you think you have your symptoms under control and you stop treatment. There have been many cases of these patients who have been stopped after two days and then all of a sudden they're developing delirium tremens and who have actually died from alcohol withdrawal. The symptoms of delirium tremen include a rapid onset of altered mental status plus or minus hallucinations. In the most severe manifestations, these symptoms are accompanied by signs of extreme autonomic hyperactivity, including fever, tachycardia, and hypertension. Again, the difference between alcohol hallucinosis and delirium tremors is that DTs are associated with an altered cognition and altered vital signs. So how do you treat alcohol withdrawal? I like to use phenobarb or long-acting benzos like Valium or Librium. And consider shorter-acting benzos like Ativan in patients that have cirrhosis that cannot metabolize drugs as quickly. And you can use these drugs more often than you think. For instance, you can use 10 mg of Valium every 10 minutes until symptoms are controlled. And since you're using a lot of benzos, make sure you hook these patients up to a monitor so you can look at their blood pressure, pulse, and O2 consistently. So when do you need to treat alcohol withdrawal? Because not every withdrawal is the same, I like to use the CUA score to help guide my medical management. You can use this score to assess the withdrawal symptoms of the patient to see who needs medical management or not. The higher the score, the more severe the withdrawal. Below is a list of the symptoms the CUA score measures. 
The first part of the symptoms can be addressed based on a severity of 0 to 7. Altered mental status is assessed based on a severity of 0 to 4. When a patient comes in and you may need to provide medical management of their withdrawal, get their CWA score every hour to assess their need for medical management. When I measure this, I like to fill out the score system on MDCalc while I am currently in the room assessing the patient to make sure my assessment is as accurate as possible. The highest score you can have is 67. A score of 10 to 15 is mild withdrawal, 16 to 20 modest withdrawal, and greater than 20 is severe withdrawal. And a score of less than 10 usually does not need medical management, but just make sure you monitor these patients for a possible increase in score.